So this is a Ryobi battery pack. It's an 18 volt lithium that goes to, well, multiple things, but in this case, a drill. And recently, when we plugged it into the charger, nothing happens. And I wasn't sure if it was the charger or the battery. However, chances are it's the battery because when we take our meter and we check the terminals, we get 92, 93 millivolts. So essentially nothing is coming out of it. Also, you plug it into drill, nothing happens. So it could be a couple things. Now in these there are protection circuits to keep them from over discharging. And there are multiple cells in here. So if one of the cells has become unbalanced, meaning it has uh, dropped, one of the cells has dropped below uh, the voltage threshold, excuse me, the uh, voltage threshold, um, this, the protection circuit just shuts off. It won't charge it. It won't allow any voltage to come out of it. It won't be allowed it to be used because with lithium cells, if they over discharge, they can short out internally and explode essentially. So I've already taken the screws out of here. And in the, in the, the reason I know it's not another type of protection is because this drill only has two contacts. So it's only pulling direct current. So if I were to put a meter on here, like I did, I should get 18 volts or something close to it. So like I said, I, I already tested this. But the other thing it could be is a thermal protection. Either they use a uh, thermistor or a thermal fuse. In other words, if this overheated, um, it could have blown the thermal fuse. Now, I've already, like I said, I already took the screws out. I took this apart. And on this one here, there's a thermistor. And that reads the, um, and it's on the other side of this pad. I don't want to take it off. But that reads the temperature of the cells. If it gets too hot, it lowers the, uh, the charging current or the amount of power going out of it. But what we're going to do first is I want to test each of these cells. And let's make sure you can see that. So that is 1.6 volts. This one, of course, I can barely get to it. Let's go to the next one. 1.1. Uh, we'll go to this and go to the next 1.0 that's 0.5 so these last two cells have really dropped so to bring this battery pack back to life we're gonna have to charge each of these cells individually and they have to be charged up to 4.2 volts. Now I have the data sheet here. They can be charged as low as 6. Point, I'm sorry, uh, 650 milliamps, or as high as uh, 4 amps at 4.2 volts. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, the nominal charge is 3.68, which is when you're applying the maximum load to it. That's what you're going to see. Let's see. The first one that has already been charged is currently at about 4.2 volts so that works this one it's going to be reverse is currently at 3.5 now it was down to 0.7 as you saw earlier but i realized halfway through that uh, i didn't have the footage that it stopped recording so i partially charged that one first thing you want to do is plug it into your meter with no load and set the voltage now this gives you a good idea, but this is much more accurate. So I'm going to get it as close to 4.2. That's actually perfect, 4.23. And if you... Yeah, 4.21. I'm just going to bump it up a little bit so that this stays solid. There you go, 4.22, close enough. 
All right, so we have a constant voltage set at that. Now to get the constant current, what we want to do is short the leads out, make sure the current's turned down somewhat. And we're going to set the maximum amount of current that this thing is going to put out. So we're going to turn this up, and I'm going to charge this at about 3.7. I don't want to go fully, I don't want to go all the way to 4 amps, I'm just going to go to 3.7. point seven five okay so what's gonna happen is this is gonna put out a maximum of three point seven at five amps and a maximum of four point two two volts so when we hook this up to the battery the voltage is gonna drop and the current's gonna go up to three point what was it three point seven five amps when as the current in the battery increases you're gonna see it here and on the meter once it hits 4.2 amps, or as it gets closer to 4.2 4 amps, you're going to notice the current dropping. And it, when it gets to 4.2, it's going to switch from constant current over to constant voltage. So let's just verify the polarity. This should be negative, and this should be positive, and it's at 3.5. So what I'm going to do, actually, we can do this. this here and the voltage dropped to 4 volts because there's a load on it. I'm going to put this in here, drop this here, and as you'll see the voltage is rising. This is the voltage that's going through the cell right now. And it's currently at 3.75 amps. And as this gets closer to 4.2, you're going to notice the, the current drop off. But because it's set at constant voltage, remember we set it before at constant voltage, it will not go over 4.22 volts. Alright, alright, so you get the point. And that's close enough, as far as I'm concerned. This takes a very long time. Um, I've been doing this for about seven or eight hours. So, so now that they're all pretty much charged up, yeah, they're close enough. Okay, so I'll put it together. I'll put the screws in later, but let's just put it together to see if it works. Make sure that that's snapped in. Okay, let's zoom this out some. Okay, so we got that back together. Question is now, will it charge? Let's first test it. No, we got power. Let's see what we got in total. Twenty point nine volts. It's over eighteen. <laughs> probably because we pushed them so far. So it says testing, but it says solid green light charged. So what I'm going to do is put this in the drill. I'll do this off camera in my own time, but I'm going to put it in the drill and drain some of the battery and then stick it back in here. And uh, so that's it. That's all you have to do. Again, if you're going to do this yourself, I would recommend using a proper power supply where you can use voltage limiting. Um, you don't want these things to explode. These are dangerous batteries. They're not meant to be messed around with. That's why all these batteries have internal controllers. Um, just not something you want to mess with. So there you go. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, subscribe if you like this video. And uh, let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to cover. All right. Have a good one.